Welcome back guys, Kinal Cross of Mark your Mark here. All about the Raptors. Let's talk about these additions that we had in the team. Let's start with JR. Who's the first player you want to talk about? I mean Pascal Siakam. Let's talk about him. Yeah. I mean he's been playing very well this season and now he could drop the another career high. 44 points in last night's game or a few nights ago. What do you guys think about his whole play so far? It's crazy, man. I would never expect that, you know, coming from the G League and everything up until now. Just his development is insane. Just the way that he's this been. Season. Yeah, just the whole season. It's just great. It's amazing. It's just the way that he could be. I don't even know. I'm like speechless with that kid. Mm -hmm. Every time I watch that man play, it's just ridiculous. I, I think none of us expected it to be this fast. Like, no, yeah, um, for sure. We, we all had it in, like, you know, when he played last year, it was like, this guy has some Draymond Green in him. We all thought, like, he has some Draymond Green in, in his game in terms of his, uh, his size, his mobility, the way he runs the floor. But no one knew that he was going to be this, how his uh, development was just going to be this fast in terms of how well he scores the basketball, how well he runs the floor, how well he shoots. I mean, he's a better shooter already than Draymond Green. It's just a matter of um, him being an elite, an elite defender. He's already a great defender. Yeah. But to really get into that, um, you know, being an all-star, to be in, considered one of the big, a big three in, 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 in Toronto, you need to be, in terms of uh, defensively, you need to be at the top. And I think he's getting, he's really at that point, he just needs a little bit, I think he just needs to get bigger. Because he's a little bit, but then it's helping him in terms of his quickness, yeah. the way he, and and the way he shoots and the way he runs the floor. I mean, I'm just so impressed. I think he is by far the candidate for most improved. I think he would win. Be. He has, has to, be, to for be. sure. He has to win that. Like no one else I can think of. I mean, D'Angelo could be in there, but in terms of the impact that he's had for the Raptors, considering how many times, how many games Lowry has missed, how many games Kawhi missed, he's been the one that showed up and um, and the most consistent. I mean, when, when Kawhi missed the game, he scored 44 points. That just mm -hmm. goes to show in terms of... That's, that was his case, why he should be the most approved player of the year. And he should have been, been an all-star. All yeah. yeah, snubbed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very snubbed. <laughs> uh, I, let's, let's talk about how um, Gasol and also Jeremy Lin, a new addition Mission. to the team, how they've been implemented just very quickly. I know they haven't they only played... Gasol have played like three games. Lin only played that one, one game, game last night. What do you guys think of how what they've been doing and contributing on the court with the Raptors? Let's focus on Gasol. Let's start with in terms of what Gasol has done in just the past three. I think he's been my favorite big man already, as, as next to Siakam, just because yeah. of the way uh, the kind of things that he could, uh, the kind of looks that he could give the Raptors. Uh, you can have him at the pick and pop position. You can have him at a pick and roll. You can have him at a post up position, and you can have him at a high post position. That's how versatile he is. He can make the shot from that uh, from the post. He can make a pick and pop. He can make a pick and roll game work. So mm -hmm. just because of his versatility and the fact that if you give him the basketball, he can make plays for you. That's just goes. To show. I mean, all their bigs has been great. I mean, Siakam, Ibaka, JV, Greg Monroe that they had. These guys are great. But then if you combine all their skills together, you get a little bit of everything from Marc Gasol. Ibaka is a good pick and pop player. Marc Gasol is good at that. Siakam runs the floor really well. He's a good shooter. Gasol is a good shooter from the outside. The only thing that you're missing are the passing and then um, and, and the fact that he can play the high post and the low post game, and he's efficient at it. So he gives them so many good looks, and which is something that they're going to need in the playoffs because everything slows down in the playoffs. Yeah, that's true. You can't just have you know Siakam running around, you know, running from back and forth. You can't have just Kawhi um, doing one on one when he gets doubled. You need to have someone that you can get down in the post and something that JV offered to them. But now you're going to get someone as efficient as JV in the block, but can also uh, defend pick and rolls and be an interior uh, interior presence in terms of uh, changing shots and blocking. I just feel like we have someone now, like we wanted to develop JV into someone like, you know, like Gasol and everything, thought, right? Yeah. And we now, now that we have him, right? So like, you know, it's good for JV to go to Memphis and everything to like, he can be able to develop his career there. But now, you know, with Marc Gasol and everything, at least this is what we have now. We finally don't have to like develop a big wait man, or wait for it. We mm -hmm. have it already. So why don't we just, like what you said, like we can utilize it now. We have it already. So yeah. And looking at Jerry Millen, he only played one game, but what can he prove or what can he bring to the Raptors squad? A lot of things. A lot of things for sure. Um, I mean, you know, he's an all like he's an all, he has that all around like leadership as well. You know, he, he we're not gonna get the same like same like you know Jeremy Lin like back when he was in the Knicks and everything, right? We're not gonna get that 
people insanity, insanity is what everyone... <laughs> yeah. I, Everyone's feeling it. Everyone in Markham yeah. and Pacific Mall is just like, yes, let's get it. I was just about to say Spadine's pretty lit too, I guess, <laughs> yeah, so but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, you know, we're not going to get the same Jeremy Lin as we did before, but I feel like he's just going to be a really good role player, you know. Fred Van Fleet sitting out for like three to five weeks. He can mm -hmm. be able. He's going to be coming off the bench now when like you know and everything. So he even like even from last night's game that you know the pick and pop and the pick and rolls with like with with Gasol and everything. That's just a prime example of what you know Jer we can utilize for Jeremy Lin as well, right? So like he's a, he's a good shooter around the rim. You know he's not the best defensive player, but he's an overall good like fundamental defensive player too. So yeah, right. Yeah. I think yeah. with I think with Jeremy Lin uh, just quickly. Um, when it comes to him, he's very good offensively. And I think now what he's going to think about doing is that he's going to pass a little bit more yeah. because he has so many options mm -hmm. from the bench. He has OG Ananobi who dropped 22 points the other, the other, the other night. Norman Powell, also Marcus Saul. It makes a match with Chris Bouchard and, um, and another player. But I think he's going to put in that role onto him passing more. And if he does need to take the shot, He'll take the shot, which he and then he has high IQ, so he's a very smart player. I mean, obviously because of the, you know Harvard, you know Asian, <laughs> you know, he's a very smart player. <laughs> well, I think what he's gonna offer the Raptors is a different look at that combo guard position that they have with the lawn. Yeah. Uh, because both the lawn and and Van Fleet were more of a score first type of mentality yeah. guards, where he's more of a uh, a pick and roll maestro the way uh, Lowry does it, but Lowry is more of an outside kind of pick and. Um, from off that screen and shoot, whereas Lynn is more of attacking the rim. And that's what kind of way he's going to give them because this is this will allow when Fred Van Fleet comes back, allows Fred Van Fleet to play his best role, which is that off catch and shoot and off that um, off the pass going in the corner. That's mm -hmm. kind of where he's, mm -hmm. he excels at. Whereas Jeremy Lynn excels at that pick and pop. As once he gets used to Gasol, uh, Siakam and, and Ibaka, Come giving him screens. I think he's gonna be. That's why. That's what made him really good in New York. If you watch, his game really took off in New York because Anthony allowed him that open floor where he literally just ran pick and rolls with either Stoudemire or Tyson Chandler. That's yeah. how yeah. Lin Sanity started. If you guys, Dan Tony was so good at utilizing point guards because of the fact that they give him. He gives him so much freedom and so much space and so much usage in terms of the basketball. And and this is where he excelled at. And if if Nick Nurse learns how to use him in that way that they did in New York, where he just runs pick and roll with Marc Gasol, pick and pop with either Gasol and Ibaka. I think they're going to get the most out of him. That's, that's what I think Jeremy Lin can provide to them. Second half of the season is going to be very interesting. They're at 43 and 16 wins, 43 wins, 16 losses, tied for first against Milwaukee. But both of them have both of the highest wins against um, in the whole NBA. So what do you guys, quickly, what do you guys think is going to happen in the second half? Oh, Where do you see them? Where do I see it? First, second. Dang. Do they need the first to win? I think yeah, yeah. yeah. So I feel, I feel like we just might we might just make it to the number one, right? So especially yeah, so, yeah. I feel it. I feel like we do need the home court like advantage. We do. we do. And every single to make it to the finals, we just, we need the home court advantage. It'll be key if we do make the finals, home court advantage. That's that's the aim right now. And plus, winning first in the East would be nice too I agree. against Milwaukee. Yeah. Oh yeah. They have our numbers, but I feel like Gasol and, and Lynn may, may be the big difference in a healthy squad. Like, we just need some. Once, the, once, we, once they get the playbook down and we have a healthy squad, we'll be dominant. We'll they be just need team. to fit into the system. That's all right. They just need to get into it, know how we play and everything, and how, well, you know, how our fan base is, and they'll understand. They'll, they'll grow into it and everything, right? So, yeah. We agree. Sure. We agree. Yeah. Well, that's all we have, guys, for our show. I hope you enjoy that. But before we end it, any shout outs that you'd like to make, Ingrid? Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Any shout outs for your fan, your family, any, you know, where can they find you on Instagram? Just say. Oh, yeah. Y'all can find me on, like, uh, on Instagram. It's May Castro. So it's M A E E C A S T R O. Uh, shout out to the family, I guess. Family in the Philippines, Takuyas and everything, I guess. Of course, but, of yeah. course. Any last shout outs for us, JR? Yeah, before don't, we forget, end it. don't forget to follow us all on our social media accounts, Pinar Cross, or on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And also have our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Pinar Cross. So check us out. Full episodes there if you. Anytime you miss it or you want to rewatch re some episodes, check it out over there. Awesome. Had a great episode, guys. I hope you enjoy it. And other than that, stay balling.